back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. We're going to talk about Drew Barrymore today. I actually don't think I've talked about her on the show. I think I reacted to the clip of her like kneeling in front of Dylan Mulvaney. Do you want to know, ironically, who uh, dislikes me the most sometimes? Who? myself. But she has this daytime talk show that is absolutely blown up. It's kind of like her redemption era. And she is now trending online for something that she said about her mother. And it's kind of spicy. So we're going to talk about that today. Before we do, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you've not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. So if you know anything about Drew Barrymore, you know that she had a very public and a very rough upbringing. She had two parents that were in the industry. Her father was John Drew Barrymore, who was the son of John Barrymore. It's a long line of, you know, actors and producers, but she was pushed into the spotlight and started acting and modeling when she was 11 months old. She was taken out of school to go party with her mom. She was introduced to drugs and alcohol when she was seven years old. She would go to Studio 54, which is this very notorious club where all the Hollywood people would hang out and she would get high and drunk literally before she was even 13 years old. She had to go to rehab when she was 11, I believe, and her mom had her institutionalized when she was 13 years old. And there is photo and video evidence of all of this happening because again, she was in the spotlight since she was 11 months old. And I'm sure that these are memories she really does not want to bring up again and does not want to remember. But if you have memories that you want to remember, you need Legacy Box. Legacy Box is a mail-in service that converts your videotapes, camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures to perfectly preserved digital files. These irreplaceable heirlooms are deteriorating. They're at the risk of heat, mold, and fire. Not to mention the magnetic tape, like what's used in VHS and camcorder tapes, was only made to last 10 to 20 years. Legacy Box is the easiest and safest way to preserve those special memories. They've thought of every solution for digitally preserving your past. Now, sadly, a lot of my family's pictures and videos were lost in a flood that happened at my grandparents' house many, many years ago, and Legacy Box was not something that existed at that time. So sadly, I don't have a lot of things to preserve or digitize right now, but my team members have been using Legacy Box. My editor, Austin, who does Off the Clock, he just sent in a ton of things. He just received them. They got back to the office, so we are very excited to see what little Austin looked like. So if you want to do the same, send in your Legacy Box filled with old tapes, reels, and photos, and get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and organized. It is truly like magic. Plus, it is done right here in the U.S. They'll communicate the entire process to you every single step of the way. Now, for a limited time, Legacy Box is giving you 50% off to preserve your past. That is 50% off. There has never been a better time to convert your entire collection. Visit LegacyBox.com slash Cooper to preserve your aging media today. Again, that is LegacyBox.com slash Cooper, and hopefully you all have better memories to preserve than Drew Barrymore. Then at 14, she emancipated her herself. She was sleeping on the floor of this tiny, you know, small West Hollywood apartment. And she and her mother have had a tumultuous relationship ever since. And she's often talked about her mom and said, you know, I, I think that she just didn't know what she was doing and she couldn't set boundaries. And she wanted me to be her, you know, accessory and her little friend, but she was never a parent. And she has said recently that she has forgiven her parents. Her father died in 2004 and she was caring for him as he was passing away. She even talked about an interaction that she had with her estranged mother this past year on her 77th birthday and how lovely that was and how she's, you know, trying to work through all of that. But recently, she gave an interview that utterly flipped this story upside down. Page Six tweeted it out yesterday. Drew Barrymore admits that she wishes her mother, Jade, was dead. Quote, I cannot wait. And this has 1.9 million impressions. It immediately caught fire. Somebody said, what has she done to Drew that made Drew say this? You've been living under a rock, apparently. Somebody else said, some things you just don't have to say publicly. Another person said, a loving, progressive, liberal Democrat. And this is like, that's what pisses me off. Like, come on, guys. This isn't political. That's low-hanging fruit. You're just trying to find a way to criticize her. Move on. It's not political. You don't have to make everything in the world political. Like, let's chill out. But anyway, it seemed like very few people actually took the time to look at what Drew actually said in that interview and the context of it. And so she posted this last night, after this had already gotten a ton of attention. You know what? To all you tabloids out there, you have been with my life since I was 13 years old. I have never said that I wish my mother was dead. How dare you put those words in my mouth? I have been vulnerable and tried to figure out a very difficult, painful relationship while admitting it is difficult to do while a parent is alive. And that for those of us who have to figure that out in real time, cannot wait as in they cannot wait for the time not that the parent is dead don't twist my words around or ever say that i wish my mother was dead i have never said that i never would in fact i go on to say that i wish that i never have to live in existence where i would wish that on someone so obviously 
she was not having that. And obviously, page six was twisting her words for a clickable headline. But that quote that she wishes her mother was dead literally was never said. Now, this all came from a New York Magazine interview that was published yesterday. Drew Barrymore is figuring it out. Her radically intimate daytime show is as much therapy for her as it is for her guests. And she's often barefoot and rolling around on the floor and hugging audience members. And a lot of Drew's personality is her kind of sounds like such a weird progressive thing to say, but like her reclaiming her childhood because so much of it was stolen from her because of her upbringing. And so it's her, you know, basically doing real time therapy sessions with people and being very, very vulnerable. She just had Brooke Shields on and they were crying about their experiences with their mother. Like that's kind of the gist of the show. But here is her full quote. And at the beginning here, she's talking about Jeanette McCurdy and Brooke Shields, notorious mothers who have both since passed. Jeanette McCurdy wrote the book, I'm Glad My Mom Died, which I've talked about a lot. Anyway, that is the context here. She said, all of their moms are gone and my mom's not. And I'm like, well, I don't have that luxury, but I cannot wait. I don't want to live in a state where I wish somebody to be gone sooner than they're meant to be so I can grow. I actually want her to be happy and thrive and be healthy, but I have to f grow in spite of her being on this planet. So she is acknowledging the fact that it is easier to heal and move on from trauma and abuse when you are not faced with a person who caused that pain. And this was an important line which comes immediately after that paragraph and the author writes, an hour after the words leave her mouth, she already regrets suggesting any ill will towards her mom. I dared to say it and it didn't feel good, she says. I do care, I'll never not care. I don't know if I've ever known how to fully guard, close off, not feel, build the wall up. And what she was suggesting was not ill will in my opinion. Again, it seemed more like a psychological fact. Like it's a burden that she she has to carry while her mother is still in her life. And honestly, I think that all of this actually paints Drew in a better light because even with everything that her mother and her father did and the dangerous environment that she was raised in, she still wishes her mother well and hopes that she's happy and she has not built that wall. She is still interacting with her mother. They're estranged, but she still cares about her. And as a result, she has not been able to fully process and heal from everything she went through because she is still reaching out to her parent and trying to help her. In another article, she said, I can't turn my back on the person who gave me life. I can't do it. It would hurt me so much. I would find it so cruel. But there are times when I've realized that our chemistry and behavior will drum up a feeling in me where I have to say, okay, I need a break again. And with all of this response to this, you know, headline that page six wrote, I found it so fascinating how people were so quick to criticize her and condemn her for that article in this quote. But Jeanette McCurdy, who I mentioned earlier, her memoir, I'm glad my mom died, has been a raging success. I think that she is still doing the book tour for it. It was a number one New York Times bestseller, an international bestseller, and is still trending on Amazon. And I have nothing against it. I read it. It was a brilliant, heartbreaking book and gave so much insight into, you know, what Hollywood does to young people, especially if your parents are unstable and are benefiting from your very lucrative career. And similar to what Drew is saying, Jeanette only processed her upbringing and was able to write this book after her mom died and she finally broke free. So why is this book acceptable where the title is literally, I'm glad my mom died, but Drew's statement wasn't? It's just food for thought. Thankfully though, her fans have rallied behind her and people are now taking the time to actually understand the context of which there is a lot and actually read the article. And I always say like, actually do your research and read the article. And I say that, you know, usually in terms of political things and when you're analyzing any kind of policy, but also with these pop culture and social issues, because this is somebody's real life. This is her reputation. Like if you're gonna comment on it, take the time to actually try and understand it and have some empathy. Thanks for watching this episode of the comment section. I hope you enjoyed it and that you maybe even learned something. If you've not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss an episode.